Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm continuing my monitor engineering series and wanting to show you how to ring out a floor wedge. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, a floor wedge is obviously a speaker that is on the floor that all our musicians on stage would be using if they don't have in-ears. They would just be using the floor wedges. There's a bunch of churches, there's a bunch of venues, there's a bunch of shows that exclusively use monitors or floor monitors or wedges or floor wedges. There's a ton of different names for these. But what's important is getting the EQ set on that floor wedge to not cause feedback with your microphone. Because that person that's singing into that microphone, they might drop that microphone down next to their side and have it pointing straight at the speaker. And if that's the case, you don't want to have that cause any feedback because then that would cause a whole bunch of issues for the audience and the musicians. So I'm wanting to show you how to actually ring out a floor wedge and some tips and tricks on how to do that in the best way. A little bit about my test rack that I have today. I have my vocal one, so this microphone is going in here. Check, check, check. This is being sent to my Mixbus One. As we can see, that is causing audio in my Mixbus One. That's also being sent to my left, right, so that you guys can hear it in this YouTube video, as well as this is being sent to my floor wedge that I currently have on this mono out. So, so as, as I, I turn, turn this, this up, up it's, it's going to start bringing volume into this room. If I was doing this in a show, obviously I wouldn't be having this mix bus going to my stereo bus, but for this case right this second, for this video, I have it going to my stereo bus so that you can hear what's happening in this microphone. Now, when I'm setting up my floor wedge and I start to ring it out with a microphone, I grab the vocal mic that's going to be used by the lead vocalist or the vocalists that are in front of this floor wedge, and I will take that microphone up to where that speaker is and I will talk into it. But one thing that I like to do before I do that is I actually want to delay that speaker output by about 100 milliseconds. And the reason that I do this is just for ringing out. After I finish ringing it out, I do remove it completely. So I uninsert that delay that I've added. Now, the reason that I add this delay is so that feedback takes a little bit longer to appear. Because of that distance or that latency, any feedback won't spike right away. It will take a little bit longer and it'll ring out just a little bit longer as well, making it so that I have a little bit more time to either A, identify the frequency, or B, go and find the EQ adjustment to bring that down. Now with the delay on this floor wedge, we can go to routing, we can page all the way over until we get to our XLR outs. And in this case, I have this speaker plugged in on output 14 and our delay is right here. So we can see that I have a delay of 100 milliseconds and because it's yellow, it is inserted. Now, when we're ringing out floor wedges, there's two things that we can use when we are ringing this out. We can either use the bus EQ, so the mix bus, I have it selected here, and I can go to my EQ section, and there are six bands of EQ that are available to us. And if that is enough bands of EQ for you, go ahead and use that. My recommendation is if you are using the mix bus EQ for ringing out your floor wedge, that you'll want to make narrow adjustments. So we can go in and apply narrow cuts. If we make large cuts like this, this is changing the tonality of this floor wedge. Now, if you make enough small narrow cuts to a floor wedge, you are going to be changing the tonality of that speaker. And so there does have to be a little bit of a weighing of do I want this to not feed back or do I want this to sound good for the musician? So we can go and use our mix bus EQ for doing this. The other thing that we can do is we can use a graphic EQ, which we can go to our effects section and tab all the way over to home. And we have all of these slots available to us that we can go and insert a graphic EQ on. 
So in this case, I'm going to be using my number five effects rack and we can go and change our type and the dual graphic EQ is all the way up at the top. There is also a stereo graphic EQ if you happen to have a set of stereo wedges on the stage. There's also True EQ. Now I do have a video on YouTube that you can search up between GEQ and True EQ, and the processing is slightly different between the two. But in this case for today, I'm going to be using the dual graphic EQ. Once you've selected that, you can press this button down. And then what we want to next do is we want to go find our mix bus one. So we're going to rotate this first rotary knob until we get to bus one. We are going to select it. And then once we select it, we can then insert. Once we've inserted, we can go and press our last rotary knob, and now we can go and adjust this. So we can see that as I talk into this microphone, check, 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 we can see a little bit of a bar graph here of our RTA. Now, another thing that I love to do is switch this into spectrograph. And then this can show us when a piece of feedback is happening, and it will show up as a straight line. For instance, I'm gonna whistle, So we can see that line is right there. And so that's going to be super useful for us ringing out this floor wedge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this microphone and take it up on stage with an iPad and make these adjustments. Additionally, you can have a friend or another person on the team grab this microphone and go sit up on stage to do this. But you do need to be very careful to not feedback too much and possibly damage their ears, so do be careful. So now I have this microphone and I'm up on stage and I'm actually going to take this microphone and point it towards the floor wedge as I'm talking into it. And that way it is going to feedback the first because I have the microphone pointed towards the floor wedge and I'm talking into it so it's going to be having the best possibility of feedback. If we turn the microphone around and this is a cardioid microphone and we're pointing the back of the microphone towards the floor wedge, that's the null of the microphone. So it's going to take a lot more volume to feed back than if we are pointing it directly at the floor wedge. So I'm going to start raising this up. Check, 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 check. Hey. Hey, hey, check, 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 check. check. Okay. okay. So, so if I change this into spectrograph, check. check. We can see that there's a couple frequencies feeding back right here. So what I can do is I can scroll this over and then we can see an overlay here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this 5K out just a little bit. Check, check. Check, check. So already that's taken care of one section of frequencies. Okay, so now I'm going to take this up even farther. Okay, and then the other one was at 1K. Check, check. Check, check. Hey, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, check, check, check. These are a little finicky because they're in between some of these EQ adjustments. Hey, check, check, check. There it is, 630. Check, check. Hey, hey. Okay, so this is quite loud in this room. <clears throat> and so if I turn this microphone around and keep it up at that positive five, I mean, I am getting, getting about, about 95 to 100, 100 dB, depending on how loud I talk in this microphone. So it's, it's pretty loud in here. But the benefit of this is I can have this all the way up to positive 5 on the output of this monitor. 
If I uninsert this EQ, what's gonna happen is that this is going to fall into feedback at a lower volume. So I'm going to go do that. So I'm going to go find my bus one insert and I'm going to uninsert this. And instantly, right here, I'm just talking and it's already feeding back. Check, 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 check. And once I insert it, the feedback goes away. So, so I, I can, can continue, continue going, going up. up. So, so if, if I uninsert un this, we're into feedback, feedback insert, insert, it's, it's there. there. Now, now one, one thing, thing I wanted to show you guys is the latency that's added, this delay. So if we go back to our routing and uninsert this delay, now what's gonna happen is the feedback is going to be a lot faster. So if I go and go back into my effects section and go and uninsert this, Check, 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 check. This feedback happens a lot faster. We can, we can tell that that tail goes up a lot faster than with the delay. So if I insert this now, check, 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 check. So I'm getting up into the positive five here. And if I push this a little bit farther, okay, so there's a little bit more that I can be taking out of this. So let's go do that. Check, 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 check. So that's at 3.15. There we go. Hey, check, 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 check. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uninsert this and it's going to start feeding back a lot faster. Check, 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 check. And what I want to show you is if I go to my routing and I insert this delay again, it's going to take a lot longer for the feedback to come back. We can, we can tell, tell that it's, it's just, just kind of gradually, gradually going, going up rather than just being instant feedback. So that's one of the benefits by applying some delay to your floor wedge when you are wringing out your floor wedge. But once we are done with that, we will want to make sure that we uninsert that delay. As you could tell when I was talking there, it was a little bit weird to talk into the microphone and then 100 milliseconds later, hear my voice again. Now, as we look at this dual graphic EQ, we can see that there's a bunch of EQ adjustments that I made to this monitor. Now, all of these collectively did lower the amount of gain that I could push this monitor up, but some of these things are definitely pulling down individual frequencies that were exciting this floor wedge. If I was to uninsert this, those frequencies are still gonna be peaking either because of this mic or because of the way that the speaker is either manufactured or presenting itself in the room acoustically. Now you can go copy and paste this across all of the floor wedges now if you wanted to, but it's gonna be better if you grab the second vocalist's mic that's standing in front of the next monitor and do it with their microphone. The reasoning behind that is because some of these microphones have slightly different frequency response than others. For instance, if I had a brand new SM57 versus an old SM57, the older SM57 might just be gunked up a little bit from the years of use. So it might not have as bright of a high frequency response. In that case, then you would want to be using that microphone in front of that floor wedge so that you're ensuring the best ringing out of these monitors as possible. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you do happen to have any questions, please post in the comment section down below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I would make, please put that in the comment section because I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com. Thanks so much.